Hello explorers and welcome to another video. Today we are going to talk about Rust. And Rust is one of those languages that is very similar to C in performance and in structure and so on, but it's safe. In C you can have pointers to whatever you like, you need to handle memory man management and types are not that hard. So you can actually do a lot of things in C and the hard part there is that you also can do a lot of wrong things that leads to very strange errors. But Rust is trying to help here by having a strict language but compiling down to something that is very similar in bytecode as C. So let's jump over to my other screen here. So here we have the requirements for Rust. So first off we need the Microsoft build tools. So if we go to this address here it will be in the readme in the repository that you can find in the description down below. So if we go to this page, download this tool and run it, we will have something like this. On this side here you see MS build tools, that will be one of those that will be installed just by starting this program. But you also want to see build tools, so you need to check this mark here over here, so you get the C++ build tools in order to get Rust. Every requirement that Rust needs, and then you press install down here, it says close for me, but for you there will be an install button. So, if we go back here, after we have installed those requirements, we need to install Rust. And if we go over to the Rust page, it also will be in the README, you can download either the 32-bit version or 64-bit version with I did, or you can install it with the Windows subsystem for Linux. And if you download this and run it, you will get something that, lo that looks like a command prompt with a lot of text and then asks you if you want to proceed. In that text you can see that you don't have the requirements yet, so you still need to install C++ uh, build tools and then you have done something wrong. Uh, but hopefully if you have installed those and rebooted your machine, that should not be there. But uh, in there you will be asked where your cargo director will be, and cargo is the package management for Rust. So when you build things in Rust, you will create cargo packages, and those packages will be your dependencies that will be included in your executables. So it asks you where that director will be, and it works similar to npm and to Maven, and Gradle and so on, that they will use a central repository for all your right libraries and then link them into your projects. So let's jump over to some code here. So here we have the readme that I started, I will flush that out. So here we have the cargo file. And in the cargo file you can see that you first off have some package information. This is the package Rust web server. We have a version number and we have uh, author and edition. And then we have the dependencies. And if you do cargo in it, you will get all the things up here. So you create a directory, run cargo in it, and you will get a cargo uh, Tommel, and you will also get a main RS, as in Rust, uh, that is just a hello world. So that's a good way to get started with the project. In this case I have added Hyper and Tokyo. And Hyper is a web server framework that I will use, that is very quick and small. And then we have Tokyo to get a synchronous uh, execution in our program. So that's a good library to have too, and the example for Hyper added that uh, dependency, so I will do that too. If we jump over to my main RS here, we have some use declarations up here that's similar to import or requirements in other languages. Uh, so that's uh, the different packages that we need. We need to create some socket address, we have some uh, hyper-specific body request response and server things, and we can make services. 
And our first service is here is a hello world service that takes a request body and gives a response body. And our response body we create by just saying okay, uh, give us a okay. Uh, so it's not something that fails. So in, in the result here you can see that you both have a good state and a bad state. So in Rust you can return a failure state or an okay state. And in this case we will return an okay state and this is a new res response with some text. And in this case it's just an HTML page with hello world. And then we go to our main here and we see that that is also asynchronous. So that's why we have this Tokyo main uh, declaration over here. So this is similar to uh, annotations in Java. And then we have the socket address. We say that we want to bind to 3000. We will make our service here. And uh, down here we will bind the server to this socket address up here and serve our specific service. And down here we have something that tells the executable that run this forever. So the server will await an error. So if no error uh, is happening, it will wait forever and will still continue running. So let's jump over to a command prompt here and do a cargo build. So cargo init created the project. project. Cargo build will download all the dependencies that are required for this executable into my repository. And after it has downloaded all of those, it will build my uh, executable. And that executable is just a simple exe file for Windows systems. If you build it on a Linux system, it will be a standard binary in ELF. And you can also build it on a Mac and that would have a similar executable status uh, on Mac. And there it has compiled my um, little Rust server. So let's look into target and then uh, the debug directory. So you see here that we have an exe file for four megabytes that is our Rust server. So it's not that large for being a web server. So let's run target debug Rust server exe. So we didn't have any outputs, we didn't do any print statements, so we don't know anything more than that it's running. If we go over here, we go to localhost 3000, you see hello world. So we have gotten something working, some simple Rust server. So this is a quick introduction into Rust. Um, maybe I will do a series about this where I start building on a program and talk about my uh, failures and what I was able to accomplish during a week perhaps. Uh, if that's interesting, leave a comment down below and leave a like on this video. If you like this video, give it a like, share it with your friends and colleagues. If you have any comments or suggestions, leave those down in the comment section down below. If you haven't subscribed yet, please do that. And I really hope to see you in the next video.